facts about the massacre of Glencoe, which took place in the year 1692. The Jacobites were supporters of King James II who attempted to restore him to the throne by plotting uprisings and seeking assistance from France. Lord Bradalbon was involved in negotiations with the Jacobite chiefs in 1691 in an effort to bring about a cessation of hostilities and establish loyalty to King William's government. These negotiations were ultimately unsuccessful, and a proclamation was issued requiring the chiefs to take an oath of allegiance or face punishment. MacDonald of Glencoe was one of the last to comply with the terms of the proclamation. Sir John Dalrymple, the Secretary of State, became increasingly frustrated with the difficulty of getting the Jacobite chiefs to come to terms and may have been behind the decision to take action against the MacDonalds of Glencoe. The government issued a proclamation requiring certain clans, including the MacDonald clan of Glencoe, to take an oath of allegiance. Glencoe, the leader of the MacDonald clan, attempted to comply with this requirement by taking the oath at Inverary. There was some confusion about the validity of Glencoe's oath. The certificate of Glencoe's oath was delete and obliterate by the clerks of the council. The government then issued instructions for the troops to march against the clans who had not taken the oath and destroy them by fire and sword, but to also offer terms and quarters to the chieftains and heritors. Secretary Dalrymple was mentioned as having a desire to completely destroy the MacDonald clan. The phrase Dylender est Carthago, meaning Carthage must be destroyed, was used in reference to the conflict. A group of soldiers, led by Robert Campbell of Glenlyon, were sent to Glencoe with orders to kill the male inhabitants. The soldiers arrived under the pretense of a friendly visit, and proceeded to murder the male inhabitants of the valley, including the chief of Glencoe. The soldiers also killed and injured other people in other parts of the valley, and set fire to the houses. The massacre resulted in the deaths of 38 people. The government's actions have been criticized for the excessive use of force and the lack of proper legal procedures. The soldiers were quartered in three different places in Glencoe, and carried out the killings at three different locations. One soldier, Captain Drummond, killed a young man and a boy during the massacre. It resulted in the destruction of houses and the displacement of many people, including elderly, pregnant, and nursing mothers and their children. The event generated a great deal of public outrage and may have had political consequences. The government of King William took some steps to address the situation and try to mitigate the negative public response, such as dismissing a government official and establishing a commission of inquiry. The Jacobite party may have tried to use the incident to their advantage by exaggerating the details and using it to further their own cause. The event was so significant and shocking that it was initially met with disbelief, and then with horror and indignation. The government viewed the clansmen as a threat and sought to eliminate them as a public pest. The manner in which the massacre was carried out, through deception and violation of laws of hospitality, is what gives the event its nefarious stamp. King William signed the order for the massacre, but it is unclear how much he knew about the circumstances of the event. The massacre has been described as a foul and indelible blot on King William's reign. The Glencoe massacre was part of a larger historical context of conflict between the government and certain Scottish clans.